Hello guys, continuing with our statistics playlist, we will learn about box plot in this video. Okay, we will learn everything in depth. Uh, what is box plot? Why it is used and how it is constructed? Okay, so let's start. So you might have already seen what a box, uh, how a box plot looks like when plotted. So let me just draw it quickly. So this box represents the IQR. So these are called as bisques, and this will be min. This will be max. So if I can treat it as quartile one, this will be quartile three. This will be my min value. This will be my max value, right? And in between somewhere in this box, we will have the median line. Okay. So this is this will be our median. And anything beyond this min and max are outliers, right? So these dots will be treated as outliers. Also on the main side. So this is how a simple box plot looks like. But why why this is used? So mainly this is used to identify the distribution of the data, how it looks like. So if we just plot it, we will get to know whether the data is skewed or not, and we will also get to know towards which side of the central uh, center of the data the data is concentrated towards more towards the mean or shifted away from the mean. Okay. So that's what basically box plot gives us an idea and this also gives us uh, as i told you it will help us to understand distribution it gives us an idea on the skewness okay and also the important part is to identify to compare the compare the data between two categories data between two categories okay so I'll tell you what I mean by this, right? So let's proceed further. So before we understand this box plot, we have to understand what is this Q1, what is this Q3, and how this min and max are different from the basic min and max value. Okay. So if you guys have seen my earlier video where I have explained about the quartiles, so Q1. Is the 25th percentile value and Q3 is our 75th percentile value. And making use of this Q1 and Q3, we will compute interquartile range. We call it as in short, it's IQR. Okay, so this stands for interquartile range. So you might have already guessed it when I when you hear the name interquartile range. It's the difference between Q3 and Q1. So we take the difference between the quartile 3, that is 75th percentile value and the 25th percentile value. This will give us our IQR. I'll take some example and then I'll also explain in that way also. So first let us understand the concepts. Now we have this IQR. Let's see how this min and max are calculated. Okay. So let's say we have some data. 1, 2, 3, 33, 36, 38, 40, 48, and then let's say 100, 110, 130, etc. So, if we have this data, basically the min will be the least value. So, 1 will be our min and 130 will be our max. Right? But in case of understanding the box plot and how it plots, the min and max are calculated in a different way. How they are calculated by making use of this IQR and quartiles. Okay, so let's see how min value is calculated. Min value is calculated as Q1 25th percentile value minus IQR into 1.5, right? And similarly, max value is calculated as Q3 plus IQR into 1.5. Okay. So this is how min and max are calculated with respect to IQR and quartiles when it comes to box plot. Okay. So now we have understood the basic concepts involved in the box plot. That is this particular thing here. This is our IQR. This middle line here is median. And uh, one thing to note here is this median may not be always at the center of this IQR. It can be shifted either towards the min or towards the max. Okay. So just for demo purpose, I have shown it in the middle. Okay. 
So that's about the box plot components. So what about the data points outside this min and max boundary? So those will be treated as outliers. Outliers in the sense, for now you can think of this, you can relate it to odd man out. Odd man out, okay. So just think of this way. So these data points doesn't belong to this particular distribution of data that we have now. Okay. So this is everything you need to know theoretically about box plot. Now we will, what we will do, we will open up a Jupyter notebook and understand how we can calculate the Q1, Q3 and how we can calculate manually the IQR and then finally we will plot a box plot. Okay. So for that I need to import two libraries. Okay. So the first thing is Seaborn and other one is NumPy. Okay. So Seaborn or you can make use of matplotlib. I am using Seaborn to plot the box plot. Okay. So that's it. Nothing much in that. So first we will define array of numbers. So let me take some random np dot random and I cannot take rank int because it will give me in a uniform distribution. So in that case we will not have any outliers. Okay. So let me take something from Poisson distribution. So it will let me say I need to give the lamb value. Uh, let me say 5 and size let me say around 100 data points I want. Okay. So if I check my array 1, so I'll have this numbers randomly selected from Poisson distribution. So I'll tell you what are these values when I'm talking in depth about different types of distribution wherein Poisson will also be in my list to explain it. Okay. So for now, our focus is to understanding the box plot. So let's concentrate on that. So now that we have these numbers, so we have 100 numbers, right? So how I know that error one dot shape. So I totally have 100 numbers. So let me tell you how do we calculate IQR in Python. So for that, let me define a function call it as calculate IQR, calculate interquartile range. So for that what I'll, I need, I need the data as input. So that's it, I do not want anything else. So first one, in order to calculate our IQR, we need Q3 and Q1, right? So what are those? Those are 25th and 75th percentile values in this particular array, okay? So first let's get that. So I'll say Q1 is equal to so we have something called as percentile np dot percentile and you need to give the data and which percentile data you want. I need the 25th percentile data. So this will give my quartile 1, first quartile. Okay. Then I need the third quartile. So q3 is equal to np dot percentile. I need the third quartile that is 75th percentile from this particular array ARR1. So now I have Q1 and Q3, I can calculate my IQR. So I will say IQR is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So this will give me my IQR. So I will have to return. So let me take everything Q1, Q3 and IQR. Let me return everything and I will call this function Q1, Q3, IQR is equal to Calculate IQR ARR1. So, what happened? Name ARR2 is not defined. Okay, so it should be ARR1. Okay, cannot unpack non iterable non type object. So, what does it? Okay, it should be returned. There is no return here. I need to have return. Now I have my required values. So, Q1, if I check, it's 3. Q3, it will be 6. IQR will be 3. Okay. So, this is how my interquartile quartile range is looking like IQR interquartile range. Okay. So, if you guys do not know about quartile, percentile, and anything, please uh, go back to my previous video where I have explained the quartiles, quantiles, everything. I will give the link in the description. Okay. So, you can go back, watch that, and then come back to this video. Now that we have required Q1, Q3, IQR. We also need to calculate min and max value, right? So let for that let me again let's not define function guys. So let's directly calculate the min value and max value. So it should be min val. So what is our formula to calculate the minimum value? 
So it's here, right? So Q1 minus IQR into 1.5. So let's do that. Q1 minus IQR into 1.5. So similarly, we will calculate our max value. So Q3 plus IQR into 1.5. So this will be our min and max value. If I say min val, so min value is minus 1.5 and max value is 10.5. Okay. So if you look in this data ARR1, ARR1 dot min, min is 1 and ARR1 dot max, it is 12. So but if you check the min val and max val with respect to IQR and box plot, we have got completely different set of values. So this min value minus 1.5 is not at all present in this particular array ARR1. This ARR1 dot max is 12, but 12 is not the max value in this particular array. We have uh, do we have anything greater than 12 here? Uh, so this is our max value in array 12, but uh, with respect to IQR, we have got 10.5, right? Apologies, I made a mistake uh, previously while uh, taking the max. Okay. For max value with respect to box plot, it is 10.5, but we have data points which are greater than 10.5 in this particular array, right? So this is how min and max value are different from the main min and max value with respect to the numbers in the array, okay? Now that we have calculated this, we will see how the box plot looks like. SNS dot box plot ARR1. So it just needs the array. So if you see here, so this, these are called as whisks. So I think I did not uh, tell you guys about these particular lines here. So whatever you see here, this is called as whisk. Whisk. So same way, this part here is whisk. Okay. And the endpoints of this particular side of whisk is min, and this particular side of whisk endpoint is max. So that's what we will be able to see here. And whatever data points you are seeing outside this max. So here, let me just mark the min and max. So this is our min. This is our max. And this particular line here, this is our median value. And this are our outliers. Okay. So, if you want to calculate outliers, any, any data points which are greater than this particular min value here, that is 10.5 will be outliers and any data points which are less than minus 1.5 will be outliers. Since we have all positive data points here, there are no outliers at this side of the box plot, towards the left side of the box plot, but we have outliers towards the right side of the box plot. Okay. So, that is what we are seeing here. So, if you just want to check the outliers display, so we can write a code to code for that and let us call it as define get outliers and it will be input will be the array uh, min val and max val. So, that is what we want, right? So, uh, what we can do, let me quickly uh, check how we can get the outliers. So, ARR1 greater than maxwell. Yeah. So, we just need to have the Boolean indexing here. ARR1 or dot ARR1 of ARR1 greater than maxwell. So, 12 and 11, these are our outliers. So, you can see there are two data points displayed in the box plot as outliers. So, similarly, if we check ARR1 towards the minimum side, right? So, we have to check that ARR1 less than min value. So, there are no values less than minimum value, which is 1.5. So, you are not able to see any outliers at this side of the box plot. Okay. So, we will just complete this uh, method here. So, what we will say outliers towards the right side, it will be this particular thing. 
then outlines towards the left side it will be this particular thing which is less than min value right and then we can return outlines left side outlines right side so now if i call this method so let me say let me put this in a list okay so that i will take only one output from this outliers is equal to get outliers i'll pass my data points min val and max val so if i check my outliers so the first one outliers towards the left side it's none there are no data points less than min value and towards my right side i have two data points which are greater than my max value which is 10.5 and if you look at the data there is no value 10.5 here right so these iqr ranges uh, the min val and max val may or may not be a part of the data set that we have so you have to understand that part as well okay so that's it for this video if you want you can just combine everything and return just these two numbers or how many outliers you have you can return it, it as a list of numpy array okay so that's it for this video hope you guys have understood the concept behind the box plot and how it is useful okay so if you guys have any questions please let me know in comment section i'll get back to you with the answers if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe share with your peers and if you like the content please give it a thumbs up okay so till we see you in the next video happy learning bye bye